Hi, I'm Acid, and in this three-part video series, I'm going to teach you the basics of digital art and drawing furries. This is part one, where you'll be learning how to create and prepare your digital canvas, how to use layers, tools, and different brushes, and how to sketch furry heads at front, side, and three-fourths views with different expressions. I'm going to be focusing on canine head shapes. If you have another that you would like to learn, send me an email, and I'll make videos with different heads. Part two of the series will cover line art, coloring, and shading, and part 3 will cover how to draw bodies and how to position them into different poses. I know most people starting out in digital art are hesitant because they don't have a drawing tablet, so I'm going to teach methods of drawing using a mouse instead. Though if you do have a tablet, or using your phone, or have a laptop with a pen, you can still follow along. I'm going to be using a free art program called Fire Alpaca in this tutorial. The link to download will be in the description. I started out on this program and it's great for beginners. Its features are professional and translate over well to other programs, so if you don't want to use it during this tutorial it's okay and you can still follow along. The first thing that you want to do is create a new canvas. For this demonstration I'm going to use a 2000 by 2000 pixel canvas. In the future you can make it whatever size or shape you want. More pixels means you can add more fine detail, but too many and that detail will be lost to smaller screens. For a simple headshot, 1000 by 1000 is a great size. The next thing you're going to want to do is create and name a background layer and use a fill tool to make the background white or a light color. Making it a light color rather than white is easier on your eyes. After that, you want to create another layer and name it Sketch. We're going to use this layer for the basic shapes. So we already learned about creating layers and how to use a fill tool when preparing our drawing surface. The next tool we're going to learn is the lasso tool. Almost all art programs have this tool and it's used to select a non-uniform area to isolate and edit. Using the lasso tool allows you to select, rotate, and resize areas easily. This is called transforming. Brushes can create different effects and give you different types of lines. The pen tool is good for line art and the pencil tool is great for sketches. The most important tools when using the brush are size and opacity settings. When making line art, opacity should be all the way at 100, but can be lower when making a sketch or when shading. Before we get started with the art, I want to give you some pointers. When drawing a furry head, you always start with a circle, but keep in mind the circle is only a guide and shouldn't be followed as a law or you'll get a wonky head. Another thing to keep in mind is that you're working with a 3D space. This tutorial isn't just to show you where to put the lines, but also how to think about where these lines should be. You can always look at real animals or other people's art as reference for your drawing. Just remember not to trace unless it's your own photo, and not to copy other artists' work directly. So before we go right into drawing furry heads, I want to talk about some important things when drawing the shapes that go into the head. So I already said not to follow the circle like it's law, but I want to show you what it looks like if you do, do that and why it's wrong. So I see a lot of artists do these guidelines, which are pretty standard, and they start making their muzzle, and they make their eyes, and Things can get really weird because you'll notice the muzzle is a little bit small because you're following this circle. And when you draw your ears, they're not gonna they're not gonna be in the right place. The circle's a really good starting point for drawing your shapes but not for your lines. So as an example, now I'm gonna draw the circle and I'm only gonna use it as a guide for my shapes. I know my muzzle is going to be over here, I know my cheek is going to be over here, I know my brow is here, and I'm just going to draw a circle to indicate where the ears are going to be. So now that I've done this, I want to make the nose parallel with where the muzzle meets the head, and this is just a really easy way to mark out where your nose is supposed to be. Now when you follow along with the cheeks, you're going to have a dip closer to the head and then outwards to make the chin. And this will happen on the same on the other side as well, but you're not going to see the dip because the muzzle is going to be in the way. So now if I just make it more clear what lines I have, something just like this. And this is just because I started with shapes rather than lines. So 
So with the eyes, I also wanted to make a point that if you follow along just like this, you can get eyes that look good, but you should probably keep in mind that when drawing eyes, they're usually on a flat, more of a flat surface. So if you draw a square and then draw your eyes, it makes it a little bit easier and they look a little bit better usually. So making using this square to guide out where your eyes are going to be is super useful, especially when you're doing a three-fourths view. Here, I'll draw an example of what I mean. So if we were doing another angle, something like this, and we draw a square, Well, now we kind of know right where we need to put these eyes. It's really easy to get the angle of the eyes right when you're using this flat surface on the circle. Kind of think if like you had an apple and you put like a pencil next to it on top of the surface. This is kind of where you're drawing the eyes and this is the head. It just makes it very easy. I had one more thing that I wanted to go over. I wanted to say how important it was that you had continuity in your lines. So with this head that we drew, very simple, it's very rough. You want to make sure, especially if you're drawing more lines, that they follow along with the lines that you already have in the shape of the head. For example, if you were starting to draw your hair, you want to be really careful not to make something that looks weird or wrong by also giving it volume and volume that corresponds to the shape of the head. So instead of doing so instead of doing something like this this doesn't really follow the shape of the head that we're going for. So what you want to do is think of the volume and how this will be sitting on top of the head. Right? And you can still have the spikies. Just make sure you know there's space. And this will help you get something more volumetric and less flat. So, now that you know how to draw shapes on the head, I want to do a front view first. So I'm using my drawing tablet for this, but you can use a mouse. I did this before with a mouse just to test it out. It is possible to sketch with a mouse. So you want to start with your circle. And create your guidelines. And you're starting always, always starting with your muzzle and your basic shapes, like your cheeks. Which are circles. Now that you have these shapes, you want to do your, pl your plane for the eyes. And this is... You're already looking straight on at a flat surface, but this is just to give you a guide of where your eyes are going to go. And always make sure you have a space here. Now draw your eyes. They can be any shape, by the way. I recommend a shape kind of like this. Another shape is like this, if you're feeling more edgy. Now we're going to do the same thing we did with the nose and making it parallel. And to draw a muzzle, it's really just a W shape when you're looking front view. Now if you notice something looks uneven, just erase and try again to make it look more even. Now you it's really tempting to use the edge of the circle here as a lower draw, but you should just do the thing I said, dipping outwards, inwards, 
and back outwards for the lower jaw. So your ears would go on the sides of the head. And just remember, they don't start at the same point on the top of the head. It's very important. There's always a space in between. And the ears are always going to connect back to these circles on the side. Now, I don't want to do ears right now because I have something planned for that later. So we're going to go on to the neck. Now, some characters might have thinner necks than others. A good place to put it is here next to the muzzle. And they go slightly outwards. And since this is just a bust, you can come in like this. You don't have to draw shoulders or anything, you're just making the head. So this is a really good outline for drawing a front view head. Now, we're not going to do line art, but if you take your sketch layer and turn the opacity down and create a new layer, you can make something kind of like line art where we're just refining our sketch to look a little bit better and just be more understandable. Now there's a few things you can do for front view. Either you can go and do all the lines or you can do something else and use a symmetry tool. There's a symmetry tool in Fire Alpaca. I know there's a symmetry tool in some other programs like Clip Studio Paint. For Fire, Fire Alpaca you just need to press control and put a point of symmetry in the middle of your head. And this makes it really easy to just draw whatever you need to, and you only have to draw it on one side. Kind of like this. And keep in mind, this could make your drawing look a little bit weird at times. So I only suggest refining your sketch with this, and then using a pen for your actual line art. And actually going in and doing every line, rather than just doing symmetry. So this is a very neutral expression. This doesn't have any emotion. Very neutral, it doesn't even have pupils. You can add pupils looking any which way. this way, that way, you make them look up even. Doesn't matter. If you want a character to be angry, you have to you should bring your eyebrows down. And if you want them to be really angry, you can actually bring the eyebrows onto the eyes. Kinda like this. And then add your eyelids. And this is going to make your character pissed. If you want them to be even more angry, you can add like the little lines here that indicate anger. And you can even make them bare their teeth by bringing the muzzle up. You can even add something like this, indicating that they're bringing this side up more and showing teeth on this side just a little bit more. This is how you do an angry expression. Now you can do these same things on the side view and on the th on the three fourths view, and you're just doing the same thing, bringing the eyebrow over. You could add something. You could add this little cheek thing to show that they're bringing their mouth up on one side, and you can sh and you can make them show their teeth. The expressions carry over to everything as long as you know how to do them. So next view that we're going to be doing is side view. So you're starting with your circle again, as always. And this time I want you to make a flat line here, which is like a like the plane I told you about in the first one. 
Now from here you're going to be drawing the muzzle shape. And yeah, you can actually connect this back to the circle in this case. So when drawing the muzzle shape, it's less of a rectangle in this case and more of a, uh, what is this called, a, a rhombus? And on the end of the muzzle over here, instead of just doing something flat, you're actually doing something like this to indicate the upper part of the muzzle and the lower part of the muzzle. And you're going to add something here later. The next thing that you're, gonna, you're going to want to do is get rid of this. And this line can extend up and come out like this. And this is where your brow is going to be. Going back to the shapes, the cheeks are going to be over here. The side of the head is over here. Much more visible now. We already have our brow and we already have our muzzle. And you're not going to have to worry about ears right now. It's really hard to do the rectangle that show you where your eyes are in this version. because the eyes are very small and flat because we're looking at them from the side view. So you want to recognize that there is a bit of space in between where the eyeball is and where the bridge of like the nose going into the muzzle is. And so you have this bridge in the in the eyeball, the actual eyeball, you can make your the shape of your eyelid in the bottom of your eye. The best way I found to do this is to make your actual eyeball and just make a shape kind of like this. This is the easiest way to make an eye from this view. This view is difficult for me even. And then for an eyebrow you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna make them neutral again. So now that you have your eye, you can add a nose. Now, you might like bigger noses, I do. So, I like to add a nice big exaggerated nose. Now you can add your muzzle shape, not exactly muzzle shape, the mouth. And this is just like a simple uh, smile, I guess you could call it. So this is super simple side view to make your neck Remember the back of the head comes like this and the neck comes like that when you're drawing the neck make sure to connect it to the head just with a little bit of a curve here to indicate it's going into the lower jaw and not just going whoosh. now we're going to do what we did last time and lower the opacity and create another layer so, we th so that we can refine this. And the places that you can add fur are here, where your jaw is, or your jawline, and on the back of the head. Because this is a fluffy part as well.
so this is like so simple. I don't really do heads in this angle very often because I don't really see a reason to do it in this angle. I also don't ever draw eyes in this angle. So keep in mind they're also kind of flat. Looks crazy. We're gonna make them crazy. Okay. And drawing the hair in this version is just the same stuff. Kind of crazy spiky hair. Now with the ears. A lot of people when they draw ears in this position like to put them back and that's okay. That's what I like doing. I think it just looks cute. You can also put them forwards. In this case, Putting the fluff over here. I'll do it in red so you can see. I have too much stuff going on. Just like that. This ear, you don't need to add anything, you just need to add the outline behind the hair. Because you're not going to see the opening in this ear, it's over here. So, this is a super simple side view. The neck. And remember, if you want to open your mouth, it's like a hinge. You can literally just rotate what you have and draw the mouth open instead. With like maybe they put their tongue out or something. I don't know. Just super simple. So that's how you do a side view. If you were doing different types of ears, I forgot to add that. Just remember again how this shape is laid out. If you're doing the floppy ears. By the way, if you want to make a more female looking character, just round out all the edges you have, and you can make a shorter muzzle as well. A shorter or smaller muzzle. Softer eyes. Darker eyelashes. So that's how you do a side view. A very simple side view. The familiar pink background is gone because I forgot to press record, so this is a new canvas. I'll do the same things, like naming it background, naming the sketch layer. So this last drawing is going to be 3 fourths view. This is my favorite, even though it is the hardest. I just did it until I was good at it. And this view also has the most potential to go wrong. So, we're gonna have to be careful of that, but there are some things you can do if it does go wrong to fix it instead of completely getting rid of it. So, you're starting out with your circle and you're making your guides. Um, some of the views can be very slightly turned, and some of them can be very dramatic. So, I'm gonna do something that's kind of in between, and if you, if you guys really want help with like, like more and more dramatic, or slight angles of the head. You can tell me and I can make a video on that too. So you're doing your other guideline as well and you're starting with your shapes. So your muzzle line and your nose being parallel. And this can help you create your muzzle. 
And remember, it's the same thing over here. When doing your muzzle, you're going like this and having this little indent for your mouth. It's not exaggerated enough here, so I'm gonna erase and retry. Now you're gonna make your cheek so that you can connect this to. Remember, you can draw a little circle here to let you know that this has volume because sometimes if you forget, you'll have your muzzle. It's very bad. You'll have your muzzle shape and you'll go like this to the jaw rather than having an actual chin and then going to the jaw. So just remind yourself that there is something there and create your W. Now you're creating this little square here, you're creating a rectangle, and this kind of just like automatically tells you where to put your eyes. Super simple. Make sure you put your jaw on the other side. Now you're going to do your brow, which is your next shape, and come back, and you're going to extend from the circle just a little bit and connect it back to your brow, because this part is actually the circle that we put here for connecting the ears. You can put any kind of ears that you want. does not matter to me what ears you put with your fluffies. So, here's your simple three-fourths view. I feel like I did that a little bit too fast, so I'll try to explain a little bit more while I do my refinement. Oh, I also forgot to do your shoulders, or your neck. So, you're making a line here and you're kind of finding the center, you can get rid of it. You're coming down. It just started raining, I'm sorry if you can hear that. And you make your neck. Now, oh no, my power might go out. Hopefully I don't have to record this a third time. <laughs> so if you want to make shoulders, by the way, just create some soft downwards. And, if, and you can do a gentle slope, just like this. And this is kind of shoulders that are facing like this way. It just looks cute with this view. If you want like a more muscular character or a taller character, you can make the neck a little bit bigger and more rounded shapes. And this, this is a musky, musky husky. Okay, so you can add your fur, add your fur over here, add your fur over here, add your fur on the back of the head, add your fur wherever you want to. He doesn't even need hair. Um. You definitely can hear that rain. It's like raining and winding. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna try and finish this recording while it's storming outside. This is how much I care about you guys. So, I'm sorry, I'm distracted. Just refining this. Now my eye shape was a little bit weird, so I'll fix that here. Remember that some of your eye is actually hidden by this little um, bridge right here? And you can just go like that. Something that you might want to add that I forgot to tell you is just a little something right here. It makes your character look a little bit more toony, but it's very cute. I didn't really go over drawing eyes, like the eyeballs or the pupils, in the last ones because I didn't really know because I don't really draw them too much. Uh, I'll make an eye tutorial when I'm better at drawing eyes. It's kind of my weak point. So yeah, a really nice way of drawing eyes when you're doing three-fourths is to make them look kind of like up and to the side. It just looks really cute. 
Also, you can add a more thin line over here and put the eyebrows up. And when you're shading, you would shade this a slightly darker color to give the eyes some depth and kind of show like where the brow is going to be. Just like that. I don't know how to draw noses, so you can draw it however you want. You can honestly just look at like a real dog and figure and figure it out. You for this shape, you just want to make sure that you can see the top surface, and you're going to be able to see each like nostril as well. More more or less, um, based on like how steep, ste I don't know, steep your <laughs> curve is, if that makes any sense. So, okay, you can do your fluffies. I also want to mention that your fluffies don't always have to be up. If you want a more like wolfy or like husky type doggy, you can actually do your fluffies down. Those look really bad because I'm not used to doing it. Let me try it on this side. Yeah, so you can do your, your fluff down as well. You can also do your fluff more like straight out in the clumps as well. It, it really just depends. Three-fourths view has like a lot of variables. So... Blessing... You guys know how to do ears, but, you know, just remember, you're not going to be able to see this inside, depending on what angle. Make your ears. If you want to do, like, you see how you have over here the brow. If you want to do a very light line that kind of shows where the brow is on this side, too, you can do that and add more fur over here. And that's what I do to get a more of a like manly looking character. But if, like I said, if you want more of a feminine character, just, you know, make your lines softer. You can add eyelashes and shit. Really cool stuff, epic stuff. Um, I don't know if I explained long hair, so I'm gonna explain long hair over here. I don't ever do long hair, so I'm so sorry if it's not the best. Remember that it's coming from over here and from over here on the other side as well. Usually I do characters with like bangs. Just make sure you're following the curve and the volume. The best advice I can give, and I, I'll say it over and over again, is that you really want to make sure you're following along with like volume. Like, that's the most important part. And in case you guys want to know how to make a collar, I'll just do that too real quick. It's super simple. Make sure you have the edge of the collar going around the neck. Something like this it can be super simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. And I actually have one more thing. Um how to make an open mouth. This is really good for making happy characters. I love doing this. Literally transform, rotate. You know, you don't have to do it this way. I just figured this way is pretty easy for people. Make the inner lip. Or not inner lip, inner cheek. Make sure you can see. You can add your tongue. And the mouth open. You can make them you can make them super happy. Like like they're so happy. And also, uh, depending on your style, you can have your eyes just like this, or you can add another little line right here to show, like, a more pronounced eyelid. So, yeah, that's kind of it for three-fourths view. That's all that I can do right now with shapes. Just remember, you got your circles for your ears, you got your cheeks, you got your muzzle. If you keep all of these shapes in mind whenever you draw, I promise you cannot go wrong. The next thing, this is like the last thing, I'm sorry. 
So if you notice that your muzzle looks a little weird or like a little bit too long, which can happen really easily when drawing three fourths, like it might be the right shape, but instead of being here, it might be out here. It's totally okay to just take it and bring it back. Especially if it's the right shape, you don't have to do anything. You just have to bring it back. And that's it. It's easy. If you want your sketches to look more finished, or if you want to show them to people, I'm sorry, I promise this is the last thing. You can create a layer under your sketch layer, or both of them if you want like an even more sketchy feel. You can turn up your pen size, and you can color behind your sketch. I hate this color. One second. You can color behind your sketch, maybe the color of your character, or just a color you like, maybe just a darker color of the background. And now you can share your sketch to people and it it just gives it like more not finish but like just a cooler vibe, you know what I'm talking about? Like if you show this sketch, it's looking cooler than this, you know what I'm talking about? Like it's got something going on. So that's it. That's all I have. Make sure you focus on shapes. You can change things according to your style if you want to do fur different, nose different, maybe you have a different way you want to do mouths, maybe you're different way you different way you want to do ears or different styles of ears or hair. There's so many different things you can do as long as you keep in mind the shapes and the proportions. Proportions are important as well. You can change the proportions but make sure you know how they're supposed to be and how the shapes are supposed to be before you change them. Okay, so in conclusion, I know this was a really long video. I'm sorry about that. I just wanted to get all the information in there that I could. Um, if you have any suggestions, anything you're wondering, you can email me or comment and I will get to it as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing and have a great day.